access to people uh, online. But, you know, the games yep. aren't coming right now. So I'm kind of excited when, when he's starting to talk about uh, tabletop background influences and wanting to do kind of a, a tabletop style in a way. Uh, that gets me excited because that's something I'm definitely missing. Yeah, I think that it's kind of too bad. Like, MMOs in particular have kind of evolved in a way where, you know, just the concept of trash mobs. Like, that's kind of sad. You know what I mean? Like, that makes me sad, both as a developer and a player. The fact that, you know, these encounters, which are supposed to be fun and exciting, and people literally look at them as trash. Yep. You know, like, and I think, yeah, I mean, I think that represents a, a serious problem. You know, because it's like, look, if these encounters aren't fun, then why should they even exist? You know, I mean, why don't you give me some math homework, and when I finish that, I get to fight the boss. You know, that's <laughs> equally exciting, you know, and that's right. bad. Whereas I think a lot of times in turn-based games, it's cool because you can, first of all, you can create a lot of your own objectives. Like, you know what, I'm going to kill these guys, and they never even get within five squares of me, or something like that. Or I'm going to kill these guys in this way, or I'm going to, you know, there's a lot of sub-objective you can create because playing efficiently doesn't require that you're killing 200 monsters per hour you know it's it doesn't have that same level of you know urgency where oh man if i even stop for five seconds i'm gonna my xp per minute rate is gonna fall and i'm not gonna kill these trash and you know then they're gonna respawn and then you know it's just i don't know it's just kind of a bummer how that's evolved yeah the grind the grind is a bummer <laughs> Uh, trash mobs. I mean, I hate the term trash mob. I agree. Um, I remember uh, pretty vividly of going back and and you know when when I did finally get to see something like uh, a bugbear or or a beholder. When I did come into them, I was like, whoa, man, I am screwed now. You know, we just got done fighting you know a bunch of kobolds and some goblins and. Man, I, I don't have any HP left. I'm I'm just dead, you know. And and if if the encounter went well, I mean, you ended up maybe fighting. You know, I remember sometimes we'd end up fighting less than uh, you know probably ten mobs in total during a whole dungeon adventure, and it took us you know seven hours or six hours or eight. And um, uh, the interactions in between everything of what you were doing and uh, how you were doing them, uh, it filled in everything in the atmosphere and the visual thoughts that you had in your head and just uh, trash mobs. I just, I can't stand it. <laughs> it. It drives me crazy. I hate trash mobs. I hate the term, and uh, I'm with <laughs> you on that one 100%. <laughs> Yeah, and you know what you just said also speaks to something that I think is so important is that is the stories that players or people tell about their own experiences. Like, if you don't have meaningful stories, then I feel like you didn't have a good experience. Like, my wife and I could sit down with someone who played Dayok. We could talk about Dayok for a week. Oh, we did this, and remember this thing? And, you know, we could talk for, like, a week about that game. But, like, other games that we've played that weren't as good, there's not really any story. You're like, oh, remember that time that we killed 12,000 mobs to get, like, some recipe to drop? You know what I mean? Like, that's not a story. You know, that's just, you know, an exercise in pain. You know, where, like you're saying, in your night where you killed 10 mobs, like, the next, during the week, you run into one of your friends, or you're talking to him like, oh man, remember that bugbear? That guy was rough. And if it was an MMO, he'd be like, what do you mean the bugbear? We killed 12,000 bugbears. Which one are you talking about? <laughs> you know, so it's a very different well, thing. Yeah, it's totally different. And you did mention something um, that kind of brought up uh, the crafting. How, how's crafting? Uh, not to jump uh, off of the subject, but how's crafting going to be done in the game? Is it uh, going to be your basic, uh, you've got a recipe, or are you going to be able to experiment? Uh, and figure things out. Um, how how's it, is it going to be, uh, um, you know, a side profession for people? Um, you know, because I, I see a lot of games where the crafter comes in, and, you know, everybody kind of crafts a little bit of something, um, which I, I personally, I, I don't like. I remember uh, going back into Star Wars um, when I would meet my crafter or my dancer or whatever that would buff me or give me the, the item that I needed, um, they were my crafter. I didn't go to anybody else because they were the one that gave me uh, the best deal, and they did it the best because um, there was a little bit of experimenting with it back then. Um, same thing goes for, like, Eve and things like that as well. How is the crafting going to gonna happen, and how does that all come together? Well, um, the first thing I'll say is we probably won't do a lot of pure experimenting to learn recipes, um, mainly because we did that in Dungeon of Elements, and... 
I would say, I mean, maybe we did a bad job in the system, but people didn't react all that well <laughs> to having to experiment to learn their recipes. Um, so that made us a little bit gun shy on that concept. Well, um, I'm playing Dungeon of the Elements uh, right now, and uh, you know, I kind of just what I think input might be on where the player base is on that. I think people have uh, hesitation to experiment. Like, you know, they want to they want to just already know and if they don't know, they're they're hesitant or afraid that they're gonna do something and screw something up. And that's you know, that's a problem that we've seen generated from other MMOs. And it's just made people instead of them wanting to be more creative or try something more out, it's made them uh you know, hesitant to want to try it at all. Yeah, I think you're right, and and that's kind of a that's a bummer, um, because experimenting can be fun nowadays. It's like, ever since uh, I don't know if you remember Thoughtbot. That's what I I always I say I blame Thoughtbot for what created this whole problem. Oh they were the, yeah, I hate they were the, Thoughtbot. <laughs> they were the first really big one that just everything, every quest, every item, every everything was there, and so then it got to the point where it was like to not use it was like just shooting yourself in the foot, you know, like... And you were behind. Right? Yeah. That was literally it. And, and, and you know, the, the, you speak on a good thing, and I wanted to say something after you, you give what you got to say, but, man, that thought bot thing really brought up something, and I, I, I got to interject afterward, and I'm pretty much done after that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, I mean, that definitely killed a lot of mesh. I'll save my thoughts on that to when we leap you know circle back to that topic but but crafting um as it is right now basically um you have to build some type of machine i'll call it a machine in your house to be able to, to unlock that any particular craft like you need an oven to cook you need a forge to make weapons you need um i don't know if we'll link armor also to the forge or to a separate one um but you need these devices in order to craft now to get materials for crafting you can find materials just you know randomly by exploring and you know killing monsters and bosses or you can take items that you find weapons armor stuff like that and break them down into their component materials um, and then use those to craft something else um recipes we, we haven't 100% decided what we're going to do on that, whether they're just going to be found or if they're just going to be, you know, uh, learned from an NPC, you know, literally just, hey, he can teach you this, that, and the other. Um, but so that part's not 100% settled, how you get the recipes. How you get the resources is relatively settled. But where it gets interesting is how you make the items because um, kind of as I, I touched on it briefly before, there's two basic ways you can craft. You can literally just bang the materials together the, you know, the equivalent, the typical, I click a button and craft an item. And that's how you make just kind of standard versions of an item, like a standard, you know, whatever material longsword, a standard strawberry pie, whatever. And it has its usage. Um, it can only be enchanted to a certain degree. It can only be, you know, enhanced to a certain degree or modified to a certain degree. Um, so whatever. Or you can try to make, you know, like the masterpiece level version. And when you do that, you have to play a mini game in addition to having the materials. And so then your skill affects um, how highly rated that item is, which you can A, just turn it in to be to compete with for, for ranking, for fame, all that stuff. Or you can keep it, and now it's a masterpiece version, so it can be more enchanted, it can be more modified. And, and at that point, especially for weapons, armor, um, and even for food, the, some things that you can modify it, then it's about the decision-making of the person who either, let's say, you're, like you're saying, how you go to your, your, your crafter that you really like. Well, that crafter, let's, let's just give a total example. Let's say weapon crafting, and it all uses the Match 3 minigame. If that person's really good at Match 3, they're going to make really high-quality weapons. Now, if someone else wants to be a weapon crafter and they're not really good at Match 3, they can buy the item from that guy, but maybe they're good at this other minigame for the enchanting parts, so they can enchant it really well, and then they can still be viable. And then, Or they could trade with that guy. Hey, you know, you're really good at this minigame. I'm really good at this minigame. You make your masterpiece pieces of that. I'll make my masterpiece pieces of that. We'll trade. We'll build up our customers. Um, so there's going to be a lot of, of inter-crafter 
relationships there so they can make the best items. And then once you get to know the people that do all that legwork for you, you're like, that's the guy I want to go to. And you kind of saw it in the screenshot in the video where there was like, you can, you can have items that you can put in the newspaper. Um, there's a certain limit to how many items you can advertise in, in your section of the paper at any one time. Um, and that can expand um, as you go up in level. You can, you can purchase with in-game coin and stuff like that more um, advertising space. But if you're someone who's really good, then other players, there's even a screenshot of it in the video, there's a subscribe button. Like, subscribe to Calamina's Wares. So now, whenever you open the newspaper, it's almost like a bookmark. You can instantly see, oh, what's Calamina have for sale? Because I know she makes the best food that has the best buffs and the most healing. Or I know she makes the best weapons that she's done the research on how to get the right enchantments that are really good. Um, so there's really just, it's not like everybody bangs out the exact same you know, long sword of, you know, destruction. It's Calamina is going to know, hey, I know what people, I know the things that people want. I'm going to go through the extra hurdles to get my parts from the people that are good at these various mini games, so that their output is good. And I'm going to put them together to make the best weapon. And then everyone's going to want to come to me to buy my stuff. So um, it sounds really complicated. Um, and it is from a social standpoint, but from a game mechanic standpoint, it's actually not that complicated. It's, it's really just standard MMO crafting, but to make the masterpiece versions, you're, you're adding, we've added the layer of this mini game. And by doing that, we've added a lot of player skill and then we've added a lot of social interaction. So yeah, hopefully social, that answers that. Yeah, no, that, that's perfect. Um, uh, the social interaction, I, I think, has been lost with the, the crafting system nowadays in most uh, most modern games. I mean, um, you don't see exactly what you said. Is that you could you could uh, I, man? I'm, I'm I remember I had to save this certain material for this guy and this one. I'd have to give the other guy. The other guy really wanted it, but I was like, Nah, man, I got to give it to the other guy because he's got to make this part for me because he's better. I'm sorry, you know. You're not telling the guy that, but. It, it, and then they did they find out and they you know it ends up to where this it's a, a social market you know uh, that you just don't have in games today you know the crafters know one another um, not everybody's the same so it actually brings in crafting skill just like you can have combat skill or anything else or something so as um, uh, next would be uh, item decay and repair and that's it for the uh, item item things that I had for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to on that one specifically. I'm gonna have to ask my wife again. She's our lead okay. designer, so some of these things I forget. Hold on, let me go yell off to her. Great question, man. <laughs> yeah, there's there's the last two, and then uh, my other one is uh, the one is my pet peeve about games today, and uh, I may have already uh, told it to you, but uh, I'll save that one for last. Oh, the answer to most of them, awesome. Yeah. Okay. What I found out was we haven't 100% settled. I know that one of our, I can tell you what we did in Primordiax. That was the text, the the text game that we did after Threshold. That um, we're using a lot of concepts from that. Um, items had a uh, a durability where they would wear down. Um, oh wait, hold on a second. They had there were two things. There was durability and condition. I think it was condition was like the current condition, and it would wear down to a certain amount. And at a couple of different tiers, it would perform slightly worse. Um, but every time you repaired it, it would go back to 100% condition, but the durability would tick down. Um, and eventually, it would be unrepairable unless you did something, some kind of Herculean thing. I can't remember what the item was where you could repair both. But repairing durability was really hard. Um, you would only want to do it for something really extreme. Well, so, I like that because that makes when you get the epic item that much more epic. You know what I mean? Because yeah, it, I think so you too. may not be able to keep it. It's it's it, it's like a it's like a dying a living thing in the game. Your even your item is because it's not permanent, and that that games have lost. Um, I, I definitely am all for that. Now there's a there's a there's definitely a balance that you need with it, but um, you know you can't have it too harsh or. Nobody's ever going to want to do it, um, but you also don't want to have it too lenient because then it's not going to make that epic feel when you do have it. And you're not going to miss that item when it's finally gone. You're like, man, I, I, you know, I, I've crafted. I got another one crafted. It's just not the same. This is not my beloved. And you, you almost give it a name. You know, you know items end up oh, with yeah. names, uh, the Doombringer or whatever you want to call it. Um, 
Uh, next, uh, my last question for you is, a, a lot of games nowadays, and, and this is a pet peeve of mine, and I hate it, I can't stand the guiding light, and the puzzles have been removed from games. Don't feed, like, you know, it's like feeding somebody the info, it's like, go here, dumbass, pretty much. Um, I, I, I don't really like that, and I was just curious of how you guys...